All right, I decided like 30 seconds ago to film this thing. There's record cheap. But after all the positive comments I got on a video I did in my shop of the day, I decided I'll just let y'all tag along. So what I got is a Cherokee. And this is just one that I'm fixing up. And I put a motor in it. And see if y'all can see. Oh, flashlight's too bright. But if you look down there, the block was busted. And I'm not a welder at all. And it looks horrible. So I decided to keep this thing, throw that motor in there, and daily drive it. And it needed a fender and a door. So I was down there in the junkyard. And like one guy said, he liked the video because it's completely unscripted. And it's completely unscripted because this one needs a door and a fender. But I've got another Jeep that you'll see in just a second that needs a motor, which I've got. Go show you the motor. There's a nice Cherokee. All right, so y'all probably seen that Jeep by now. If not, needs a gotta finish the hood but that's a motor for another Cherokee that I won't show you in this video and that's a motor I just rebuilt for the next Jeep. no I'm gonna go show you the Jeep that I'm getting the parts off of first it's midsummer and it's like 100 degrees so right over there is my brother's shop it's air conditioning so took time off to build a couple of motors for some projects when it does cool off so go show you the uh yeah, just cut. So this is the Jeep. I was coming to get the clip off of it. That one, the fender, the door, and found some walls. But I got to noticing it's a 2000 and Rick, let me get the different angle. I think y'all can see. Either way, if you can't see, it's, it's Rick right there. So, more walls. I decided instead of taking these panels off down here that I'm going to pull in a shop and I need a drivetrain for the next Jeep I'm gonna show you to make it full wheel drive. I've got a motor, but I need everything for full wheel drive. So get this thing in the shop and see if it actually runs. There. I'll probably be about 70 years old by the time I fix all them Jeeps up. But that's job security. Here's this Jeep here. I don't know how the shadow is going to work, but let me drag the cover off of it real quick. All right, there ain't much lighting, but you can tell it's pretty daggum mint. The seat is horrible. It's actually a, a limited. So I want to get this thing running, get the seat redone, headliner, you know, the usual stuff. It's crazy. It's it's still a used Jeep, but it's freaking nice. It's just hard to find. So the sequence that I do things is weird, but I'm fixing to go to lunch. I need my rollback, so I'm gonna move this Jeep over there. So yeah, well, that's kind of weird. My rollback's missing. It's supposed to be in that shit. Let me figure that out. All right, change of plans. My dad's got the rollback. He'll pick up a truck I bought. So let's get the other Jeep in the shop. There's always better tools for every job, but I got a sky track. You know, it's definitely better than no sky track at all. Trust me. So I moved all these Jeeps with the those actual forks actually. And I sit them all from like the side. So it gets a little tricky to how I pick them up, but I mean, I guess I'm still blessed just to have them, honestly. So what I do is I'll, I'll take it and push it out in that aisle and then pick it up from the side. So I noticed they don't have a rear end. It shouldn't make no difference, but yeah, I think I think I can just shove it backwards and then pick it up. So I'll give it a try.
All right, I got it up here at the shop. This Jeep is literally perfect. That's what I don't need the rear end. I need all the full drive components basically, and then the front clip. And I don't necessarily need that motor, but it's definitely a desirable motor. That's what I was gonna say. I'm gonna teach something in every single video, you know, just whatever is related to the content. So 99 and older Cherokees have the high pinion. If you don't know what the high pinion is, we'll have to do that on another video. But 2000, 2001 went to pre-cats. Well, there wasn't room for the high pinion. So you can see this one actually doesn't even have the converters, but it has the low pinion to clear the converter. So you can use a low pinion in place of a high pinion, but you can't use a high pinion in place of a low pinion. Not a real technical on that. And then the transmission, 98 to 01, they're all the same. So this is a 2000. I swear to goodness, that's the same Jeep right there. They're both trail rated, both the same color. I'm gonna look at the Vims and I'll tell you if they're the same or not here in a second. I can't remember them, so I'm gonna film them and then watch the video later. If you can even see them, I don't think you can. And then I'll see if they're right. That's a lot of numbers to remember. But either way, they're the exact same Jeep, same color, same year, same everything. All right, I didn't really actually need the Jeep for a while, so I'm gonna let it hang out in here in the dry with all the other Jeeps and just let it air out. It's been cooped up for many, many, many years. I've got a set of forks over there that's like 10 or 12 foot, but they're just aggravating to get under there. So what I do, put two tires on there and then just basically pick it up and wheel it in there. But there's no key, so I'm gonna try to get it in there without having to get the key, but y'all also get to learn how to crank one with a no key. All right, well, that took a lot longer than expected, but you never know. I did notice dent there. I gotta get the rubber wheel off. If y'all have never seen one of these rubber wheels, 3M, you can get it on a drill. That stuff right there is amazing. Well, that stuff right there. And I noticed uh, one little ding there. It's not bad, but wherever it's at. Oh, y'all done seen the Jeep. Never mind. Sorry, it's been four or five hours since I, whatever. But there's a wasp nest in there. I think I've already killed it, but I'm gonna sit the phone down because for some reason I'm terrified. So now what I'll do is start taking all the body panels off and this motor, I could test it in the Jeep and I don't know how much y'all keep up with me, but this, uh, got a guy asking for a standalone harness for a 99 this is a 2000 i know it's different but everything except the wires for the distributor and the coil pack i think are the same so my engine stand is already set up for a 99 so i'm gonna build this harness for my benefit but i'm helping him to get his 99 harness so i'm gonna get all this took apart and we'll just go from there All right, I went ahead and knocked the uh, front end out. It's kind of, well, it is what I normally do, but turns out there was a reason why. The steep's a little crooked. So, and then when I was moving with the sky track, that's as far as I get the arms forward. So if you tell the Jeep was, I could actually dang near pick it up with my hand. I've got a little weight. And this is one of them mistakes. You just have to eat it and move on in life. When I was moving around all these Jeeps right here, or in the junkyard, I moved. I don't know, seven, 800 vehicles, you know, back to back to back. So I was getting frustrated. So I just whip them up, throw them up there and I probably moved it around, busted that. So may fix it. I think I actually got a case half, but Jeep's a little crusty. It seemed like there's something else I was gonna show y'all. Jeep's a little crusty, so that don't matter, but axle should be fine. Uh, I cut the lowers or the uppers cause 
the way the bolt is and you have to use a ratchet wrench and it's just not fun so luckily i know a guy that's got quite a few more off the zjs or something i ain't never seen that before it's actually been so yeah i'm gonna get the record jeep off the lift there and move this axle this thing's so cool I'm gonna put this front end away. It needs it definitely needs a can of paint on it, but that's another day's project. All right, I'm gonna finish up my underside activities here. I gotta, well, I'll show you a trick right before I go. But, uh, I'm gonna get the torque converter bolts out when it's on the ground. And being a little crusty, I am worried about these bolts here. Goodness, I don't know what did that. I'm not gonna tell. It's pretty thick metal. So yeah get a few of them done and then we'll lower it down and get the motor out. All right, I got more bad news than I got good news. Oh, uh, if you ever, well, I'm sure you hadn't, but most of my Jeeps come from local. So I just buy them from people, Craigslist, well, not Craigslist, Marketplace, whatever. But most people just come to me now but I had a buddy in Memphis with a junkyard. Long story short, it was huge. He downsized, couldn't find nobody to work. And I bought, it was less than 200. I don't know, we didn't count, but just bought them by a certain price and flat rate. And I didn't look at them, we just loaded them. That was a big deal. But I don't buy many wrecks. This is a wreck. You can see all it smashed in. So I don't think I busted a transfer case. I think it pushed it that way so hard or this way, probably this way, because there's a mark there but I think it like flexed and broke. So that's why that's broke, which is, I done told you not bad, but this gets a little worse. Uh oh, you study on it right there. That bolt broke the boss out. That one broke the bolt. That one's probably just bent the bolt. So I'm gonna use this motor in something of mine. I might price it if somebody wants to buy it, but it looks like the head gasket or something's leaking. So don't really know. I feel like the motor still should be good, but I don't know about that transfer case. Probably gonna throw that thing away. Uh, oh, that was my trip. No cross member, as you can see, both broke. I put a uh, strap up there, and when I get it on the ground, whatever, I can get my cherry picker, pick it up, and just pop that strap, and I'm sure I'll show y'all, but it just falls through, and you just drag everything out. Done, a, done I don't know, so many thousand of them. Well, I wasn't gonna film no more um, down here, but I did notice, if you look up in there, there's a heat tab. So that means that motor's a reman. I still, I have no, I have no idea how many miles the Jeep even has. I'm gonna find out, but being a reman, what could you, I mean, who knows? I, I don't think there's any paperwork in there. Technically off the clock, it's a fast quitting time, but I'm gonna show you the Jeep I picked out to put the motor in. So trying to go down through the list of the easiest stuff to fix up first and then we'll get on the cooler stuff as the channel goes. All right, so I'm kind of torn between two. I've got an old police Jeep. Somebody's not supposed to get that and they did. Or, right, got this one. Oops, got fell I got a fender. Well, I don't know if I got a fender, but I got a header panel. Right? Yeah, I need a header panel. The only reason I'm picking it is because the wind is down. Jeeps actually, well, headliner. I said, I never even know about these Jeeps. I just enjoy fixing them up. So probably pick the silver one. And we got tons more to go. Oh, I feel like there's something else I was gonna add. Oh, it may sound corny in a video. I don't really care, but I truly enjoy this. Like if you go to my hometown and ride around, I'm gonna say 90% of Jeeps you see is come from me. And it just kind of gives you a I don't know, like a warm feeling that all of these that would have been to scrap or would have been here, would have died. Just, I don't know, it's like, it's not like you're saving your life, but in the same time, it really is. I'm filming three different videos on a memory card, so I start the videos as the color of the Jeep I'm working on. But just did one last night on that. That one, I was working on it for just personal reasons. But we'll move this thing out of the way and get these body panels off. And then uh, I may try to get the motor off first or the motor out because I'm doing a standalone video, harness video on uh, this. And it's not 90 something yet, but it's getting there. So I wanna do the harness video and the air conditioning. So I'm getting that off there and 
When it warms up, I'll have something cool to do. you're getting old when you start parking in low spots where you can gotta crawl into the Jeep. Yeah. All right, I decided to go real time. I swear I've got an air conditioner blowing right down here to a fan. It, it's better than no, I've sucked, I've got uh, a five ton unit I put up last year actually got a thermostat. I know 92 don't sound hot, but it's so muggy But uh needs a compressor Freon's like $1,800 a drum. They's like it'd be cheaper to buy a new one. So kind of letting all that settle out uh, This is where I put a chain and then the second head stud back there I put a it's it's wrong But I put an 18 millimeter nut on there if you ain't got a nut that fits that those are actually standard But been doing it 20 years works and I gotta do a video on this thing here. The fact that I have a cooler cherry picker than Cletus McFarlane is pretty sweet. So, uh, put her in second gear. You can see the Jeep's freaking crooked. I don't know. Yeah, it's got a thing on there. So as soon as I see lift off of this thing, get me a uh, safety. Hope there's enough light y'all can see. Well, y'all get what's going on here. Supported with a ratchet strap and I take a pry bar. Oh, it makes a lot of noise. And I'm gonna do this right now because if not, I'll forget my ratchet strap later. So now it's hanging there, hanging out literally. And I'll have to put the camera down obviously, but let the lift down and then you can kind of pick up with the cherry picker and just kind of finesse it out there. Oh, where I showed y'all earlier, the hook right here. I, if I was you, I would take my coil pack off, but luckily I know a guy that's got several hundred of them, so not gonna lose any sleep if I break it. Sure, somebody's gonna ask. I think it'll pick it up in second gear. Oh, it's just really fast. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Oh, rest it right there. And that way I can have it sitting there and I get my uh, torque converter bolts out. This is what I was talking about right here. It's got pressure on there. I've never broke one, but I know they're like a hundred something bucks. So if you're at home, probably would just pop that thing off there. And then like I said, there's second, second bolt right there is what I catch on it. Uh, oh, this is pretty cool. I swear to goodness, I've been doing this 20 something years. And I just learned this, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. Well, this one's wore off. I went to bragging. Now, if you scratch this off right there, it tells the year model. Some of them's different on where they say it at. Uh, I ain't no way I can find it. I think right there it says double zero, but that's the year model right there. And the transfer case, uh, crap. I had to find it, but it's got a casting. And like, this'll be a 2000 right here. And I'm pretty sure it'll be stamped 99, 2000. What that means, I have no idea, but usually it's the last year of the stamp. Yeah. All right, a little more bad news. Went ahead and took that bracket off. You can see that bolt will probably come out. That one's good, the bolt was just bent. And you can see that one's busted. And I've done this before, and I probably won't do it in this video, but I'll for sure let y'all tag along. What I'll do is I'll take a, a bolt and cut the head off and then I'll thread it in there and I'll, I'll lay it down in there and I'll actually weld this. And I know it's not proper, but I've done it before, it works. You know, all the pressure's down, so it'll be just pushing on that, so I actually ain't really doing much. Oh, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, and it's going, and it'll just be a Papaw Jeep, so not like we're jumping heels or nothing like that. So two bolts would probably honestly hold it, but I'll get that, and like I said, there's that freeze plug, don't like it. And now they got a flashlight, y'all can see heat tab. But, uh, I don't know about this motor. I was trying to get torque converter bolts out and it seems like it has a catch. So my uh, theory is it's probably 
got a cracked head and it's leaked all the water out and probably got a rusty spot. Uh, I don't know if I can do this in video. And while we're doing it, if you ever have a Jeep and it's got a knock, not saying it is, but check your torque converter bolts. They are known for coming out and backing out. They're like a they're like a real coarse thread instead of a fine thread. So check them. Flywheel does crack, it's pretty rare. Let's see. This sounds like real scratchy. And then it gets right there and it just it don't want to turn. So I don't know if it's a rusty spot. I might pull the plugs when I get the motor out, but uh I'm trying to think next step for this video. Put this motor away, that's another thing. Got my transmission, kept all my bolts. Gotta get my, got my header panel, gotta get my hood, my fender, my door, and then send this Jeep on its way. All right, I got the motor set on the ground. One little trick, put you a block of wood because you can see the exhaust will be hitting. I got my chains to the forward, so I'm gonna bust that out, bust that apart, and then I'm gonna get the wiring harness off. And then the motor's going to my brother's and the wiring harness is another video so that's what i was going to say if i botch this video up i apologize i'm filming two videos at the same exact time so it's pretty tricky uh probably gonna leave this jeep here it's obviously not gonna go anywhere by itself uh got a guy on that steering box so i'm trying to get the bolts pb blaster to make sure they don't break so yeah i'm gonna separate them and then i don't know where i'll carry on from this video it's weird all right i think i got my game plan got transmission laying there it's going to go, well, the front end's laying up there, and that's for the brown Jeep. And then this Jeep's going to hang out here, so that'll, I'll come back to that another thing, another time. Then I've got this motor. Uh, I'm carrying it over there. Now, I can wheel it straight in this shop. Like, i got him waiting on a guy to come buy this transmission. I was going to say, this, this is like truly a dream come true, because that's how I make a living, selling those parts, and then fixing these Jeeps up as a hobby, so... I absolutely love my job. I mean, I have no shame in admitting that. So, cool, cool. I'm gonna get the record Jeep, get that motor carried over there, and get this out of the way, and wait on another other guy. Like put my tools up. I always like this part. Got it on that cherry picker, and you get the record Jeep. Got to watch these things. Oh, okay. so now the record Jeep has the motor. So, tran tran transition transfer. Carry it over there just the shop. I bet that's closure up there. I'm gonna let y'all watch. I can't see. I'm down here. I have no idea how close it is. Y'all can see, but I can't. I'll see it when I edit. I think that starter about swung its brains out. It's been beating the ground the whole way over here. Uh, ironically, the stand is sitting here from where I just left. I pulled a one of the motors going in one of the Jeeps. I can't remember now. But I'm gonna get it bolted to the stand. Gotta pull the uh, flex plate off. Don't need a flex plate to go inside, but need a flex plate for this contraption. It's crazy, y'all seem to love this thing. It's a, it's a disaster. Concrete, batteries, get batteries off. But yeah, that's what somebody asked about that. You can see, I actually built it for the 4.7 and we adapted this on there. That's why the motor sticks plumb out here. That's why we had to add the concrete. So kind of retrofit, it's just one of the things I don't, as long as it works, I don't care. So, it works. I'll get this boat to that. All right, I got my motor in Justin's shop here. Feels so much better. So from this point forward, I'm gonna work on my wiring harness video and I'll carry on from there. Oh, can't have music. All right, this is what's so random about my days. I was dead set on building that harness, okay? Well then, I was curious about this motor because it's out of a wreck. But I'm starting to think that it broke down and got rear-ended. That's why I don't like buying wrecks. You never know. So I've already told you, the motor's shot and the motor's broke and the rear end would have been ripped out and the transfer case was busted. And it squeaks. Yeah, it squeaks, is it? Hear it squeaking? He asked me why motors squeak. I said, they're not supposed to squeak. So uh, I thought it was a cracked cylinder and some of the water had just filled it full. But I don't know how GoPro lets you see this uh, spark plug, but I, I know ain't no way in heck y'all can see in that hole. Yeah, there's no way. So let me let me get this head off and we'll look at it. It looks pretty, yeah. OK, 
Okay, not looking good so far. There's pieces of piston in between the valve and the seat. So don't know what that's all about. That's why I don't sell by miles. Yeah. Uh, I get Justin to hold the camera so y'all can watch it, witness it as I do it. Or Justin can pick up the head. No, we'll let you pick the head up. I pick enough of them up. There's, can we get like a, we need a motor stand. Why have you not lowered one yet? Because I like my pie. Why well, don't? <laughs> the dowel pins right there, ain't it? Yeah. No. That's it. All right, here we go. What's it going up? Oh. Wow. Oh. What does that? Well, you see all them, all that? Yeah. That means it was hot. But it's... So... This is a I mean, rig. It means that cylinder was hot. I don't know about the rest of them. That's wild. So probably a reman motor. I bet the injector hung and dry. What do you call that? Mm. There's a word for it. Stank. Steve Morris would know it. Not washed. No, you don't call it washed, do you? Well, it could have washed the cylinder and then washed all the oil off there. Yeah. Hey, see, see why it squeaks. <laughs> Ooh. Give it to the, golly. Give the rod credit, it didn't let go. I mean, the sad part is this This is a fixable yeah. block, but it being busted there and all that will it, it'd be, it'd be last, last resort. I was gonna say, if that was the only block we had to work with, I think we would. Yeah. Which in about? Five, ten years, it might be. It's probably going to get to that point. That's why we're not really throwing these away. So somebody bought them all and raised the value of them up and rent the market. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know where this will go from here, but this is this is a no good. So kind of ruins the wiring harness video. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and film the, that, and then we'll worry about a motor later. I guess I have to pull another motor out. Cut. They have no idea. Back to work. Yeah. All right, we got the dead end on the wiring harness, so it's back to working in the heat. Actually, it's 4.30 on Friday, so I don't know how much farther I'll go. Oh, man. I guess jumping. I don't know if y'all can tell, but the tire's completely flat. Something else to work on. All right, like I said, it's uh, 4.45 Friday. I always like a clean shop before the weekend because this is my shop. So I'm gonna try to get them off quick as possible. Okay, so I left the uh, fast motion on, but all I meant was I cut the door off with a sawzall and then I can use the impact on the bolt. So sorry about that, just a mistake. Saturday morning, some guy left crap, all the tools, didn't sweep the floor, tools, parts. All right, Monday, I actually decided to go back to work. Uh, got a Jeep I'm fixing up. You can see them projects, they cost money. And I basically make a living selling parts and vehicles now. So what I do is I'll sell a vehicle, get some money in my pocket and live off that for a while. So hadn't, I basically haven't worked since the channel started, maybe sell a part here and there. So it's time to uh, get some money back. I was using the rollback to move some stuff and I was fixing to put it up. So I know this is random, but I'm going to get the brown Cherokee and then I'm gonna stick it right up there where all the axles and stuff are. And then that way when I get ready, it'll just roll into the shop. Unless it's got a sticky brake caliper. I didn't think I'd use this rollback much when I got it, and which I don't use it a whole lot. I use my truck and trailer for the long hauls, but 
put 25,000 miles on it and speed on it, it'll work. That's the most I've ever seen on a Garmin, which I know a truck driver probably gets millions of miles, but this thing just stays here local, honestly. I was gonna get the sky track and just pick it up, but if I dropped this thing, I would cry. So yeah, I'm just gonna use the rollback, be safe, better safe than sorry. All right, I got it loaded. Like I said, you can see it's not something that you're gonna carry like to a Barrett Jackson car auction, nothing, but for a used vehicle, it's pretty, pretty legit. Well, the cover blew off, so I guess we'll do a quick walk around. But I ain't even really saw this Jeep. My parents went and picked it up for me. And it, uh, yeah, they just unloaded it and stuck it under the cover, which blew off over there. So, kind of get a little, little knickknack stuff, but it's going to be a nice daily driver. Got the roll back halfway put away. Nice Duramax, so we sacrificed the bed. Back to the TT. Oh, yeah. All right, I told you I was going to do this Monday. Still working. It's uh, Wednesday night, so go get the Jeep. Oh, man. I forgot we ain't even unloaded them. There it is. I'll, I'll get it down to the shop. So crazy how smart technology is. It tells me the back hatch is open, but it don't even tell me there's not a door on the Jeep. All right, got it in the shop. And like I said, I'm not a body man. I don't mind doing it. It's kind of different than mechanic work, but I don't know what I'm doing. I did notice, I hope y'all can see, if you look down that door, there's a bunch of divots. I think y'all can see them. So I am gonna change that door, but I don't have it off. So I think you should start with a door and then match the fender to the door since the fender door don't have much adjustment. Seems right. That's the way I'm gonna do it either. Anyway, but let's go get the door. So there's the world famous door panel. I don't know if y'all seen the short video. Somebody busted that just to get a mirror off. It's not, it's not the end of the world, but just people suck. Oh, oh, I got to notice, and this is the only one with a, that thing. So I'm gonna knock it off there. So it'll match the rest of them and then show you how to hang the door. And uh, these things right here. That's what I say, you can get an impact gun on them now. That's a whole lot easier than ratchet. See how easy that is? Right there. That's so much easier. I don't think I even mentioned why. I take the door panel off so I can roll the window down so I can show you my next trick. So now I've got it plugged in. Hope the window works. Wrong way. Yeah, of course it's from Memphis. It's got boom boom speakers. All right, I don't know how well y'all be able to watch all this stuff, but I got a transmission jack. And let me think. Door goes on that way. So yeah. Take it. I ain't worried about the vent visor if it breaks up. I don't really care. Yeah. There we go. So now, all this stuff you do by yourself, just raise it up there and nobody's screaming, hollering, waiting on you to hurry up. So I'm gonna get that focus on there and we'll check back in in a second. GoPro, stop recording. All right, I'm not a body man, so don't take my advice, but I'll give you my advice anyway. Got it on there. Always watch like the pinstripe or anything that matches up. So you can see it's pretty close, but you can feel when it shuts. See how it's going up and right. So I don't know the proper word if you're supposed to add under what i'm gonna do is add under the bottom usually the door sags over time so that'll you know if you add down here that'll pick up on there i guess you could subtract from the top but i don't think that's what i need to do yeah well we'll try and see what happens all right i'm gonna have to cut this thing because these are just severely aggravating but these little shims here just slide in you gotta take the bolts all the way out Oh, come on out there. Maybe if I take the rubber out of the way. Yeah, all right, there we go. So, we only got three for some odd reason. But sure, y'all can't tell, no. Hold up. Went ahead and stuck two in there just to laugh at it. And I zip tied that, I couldn't get it to go back wherever. So, 
Zip tied it to itself, keep it from vibrating. Uh, yeah, well. Might have just tightened it down and see what happens. That's uh, honestly not that bad off. It just shoved off in there. Let me try. All right, two shims shoved off in there. I'm not getting a micrometer out measuring these things. I know that's what you're supposed to do, but you can see it actually shut, but those just ain't gonna uh, get level. Yeah, that just ain't gonna cut it for me. So I'll break out the, oh, it's not even on. The shims I was gonna show you for the fenders. I thought I had some from doors, but when I redid that toolbox over there, I don't know where they went. All right, I wasn't gonna show you these till I was doing the fender, but they're called uh, body shim assortment. I'm sure Harbor Freight's got them for a little nothing. I feel like this was about twice as much as I need, so I found one that's about half of it. And just kind of shoved them off in there and there. And, well, this is actually the first time I've done this. I believe that is perfect. I gotta adjust the striker. It's hitting and raising the door up. But that's got my door jams about perfect. So let me, let me raise that or whatever I gotta do to it. And then we'll see what it shuts like. I actually think I should have took it out of the top. Took some shim out of the top. Left the bottom alone. It's shutting. I'm gonna leave it alone, but I mean, you look there, it's not much of a gap. Get down here. Pretty good gap. Shuts pretty good. I'm gonna let it ride until I get the fender on, see what that's about. Like I said, I'm changing this door too, so yeah. Not a, not a body man, but it works. All right, I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna start working the fender in. And one thing kind of tricky with it is you've got to get the width right because it has to match the header panel. I do know that. So thank you, uh, what? Loosen these bolts here, slide that in and out. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Still gotta straighten these out right there, but nobody sees down there, so not a big deal. I told you I was gonna try something new on there, but First, I'm gonna try this. I got a PB soap. I hope it'll come off. Go back and forth, get the nut hot helps. Yes. Hang out there, nut. So, I'll do it the proper way this time, but we'll save that for another day. We'll get that stuck up there and see what it looks like. All right, we're starting to get some more now. I swear to goodness, I just noticed that this was missing. So that'll cover up that dent right there. Pop that off. Yeah. Oh, these bolts up here, like I said, I'm gonna change hoods. So uh, going on 10 o'clock, I'll get it in the morning. But leave these, I mean, I can't explain. They're tight, but they're not. But it'll be too far out. And then you can shut the hood. Uh, I'm sure I'll show you, but you can take it and just bump it in. Same way here. Uh, left them just tight enough that they'll hold it still. And then you can just bump it till you like it. This is a little crooked. It ain't ever gonna be right. We're gonna roll with it. So yeah, gotta get them pieces. Cover that up. That's cool. Oh, I mean that looks satisfactory. We still, I don't know. I probably won't change it. I'll probably just leave it. Like I said, this Jeep's gonna be decent, but it's not gonna be that Jeep. So my bedtime. See you in the morning. Funny how that works. I tell you morning time and it's going on. Eight o'clock at night. I feel like a drug dealer. I got three phones. Oh, uh, gotta go get, where's my list? I think this is so cool. GoPro won't let you see it. Like when I start doing Jeeps that I fix up, like I've already started this one, but it's so cool cause I make a grocery list and it's literally like going to the grocery store down there in the junkyard and you just go through and check, 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 whatever I'm trying to say. I don't know. Oh, uh, I think you've probably seen the short video. Karma got this guy. If you've seen it, rather than take this little access panel off. The guy decided to rip the entire door panel off, which hurts the door panel, cool, whatever. But I was like, I went to put the mirror on and seen the wires, I was like, gum it. And then it turns out he burned his own mirror. There's a connector down there. So gotta go with some bolts and yeah, got my grocery list. So let's go get it for it. Turns dark. So cool. Run out of room, start to do some tree work over there. This hood still ain't perfect. There's a little ding right about that area and door looks better, but still better than what I got. I got that other hood sold actually. So we'll get these off there.
you can probably tell I organized by color, but that's when I was reorganizing everything. And now it's harder than it can be done. Well, this is not. But I've seen this door right over here. It's like, hey, that's perfect door. And then I got to look at clear coat. So perfect scenario, mirror, bad, get the bolts out. Bolts I need, hood's no good, need to clear. And just like that, it's dark. Stuff takes, stuff in the back of your mind takes 10 minutes, winds up taking forever. If you let somebody come down here, look for that molding stuff, I swear they'll walk up. First door they see, that door is still usable. So me, I'll go down through here and find an unusable door or not likely to be used. Get them off there. It's just, people don't care. They don't care, they do whatever. Yeah, it's getting dark, y'all can't see, but I don't know if you can tell, look how far I had to drive before I found a decent candidate. Fender shot, obviously, and the door's gotta be cave in, so I'm gonna grab them right quick and hope that they match my fate of my other one. All right, got the hood up here. Show you this real quick. I know it's gonna be hard to tell in the video, but this one just seems to have a whole lot of hairline scratches, and I don't think that one's gonna clean up as good as this one. You can see it's a little bit better, but like I said, it does have some dings. There's a one that's cleaned out, but it's gonna work. So, uh, let me get these parts thoroughly on there. I'll, I'll stop if there's anything you need to see. If you haven't noticed, YouTube doesn't let you put music in a video, so oh, I have to stop the music every time I gotta film a video. <coughs> Luckily, I didn't get it mounted. The gum clear coat. There's old hood, so I guess old hood's going back on. And this was starting to have like a natural bow out, so he's trying to pull away. So, trying to let that settle. I don't know if it'll work, never tried it before. But I guess I'm putting the old hood back on again. Just took it off. I know it'll fit though. All right, I told y'all I'd show you this part. You can see that gap, the hood looks like it shoved over that way because it's kept big. And that's what I intended on it being. But you look right here, same thing, the hood shoved that way. Well, it looks like it, so the hood's the hood is good. This gap right here, hope. You can see right now it's going on a quarter of an inch. Oh yeah, they're perfect. So I'll keep on tapping around, we have to loosen them a little more, but look, that's, heck, that's perfect. I ain't even gonna mess with it. So, 20 year old vehicle. Aha, it's starting to look like a Jeep. So right here, these three bolts will go this way. I left them snug like I did that. Actually, I lied. This top one, I just went and tied it because it, there's no way it actually did anything. So these lower two, you know, no, you can't see them. But it fits pretty daggum good. Got to raise this up a little bit, but I mean, for this Jeep, we're going to roll with it. Uh, got the lights in the back. I think I found some uh, bezels, but I don't know what I'm going to do on the bumper yet. So let me button all this stuff up. Nine o'clock. All right. One thing too. While you're here, if you're ever doing this yourself, check the light bulbs. I had to replace the one I just touched, that bulb, that bulb, that bulb, and that, well, I ain't got there yet. But, uh, I think that's it for the video. I'm tired, it's 9.30, it's hot. Memory card's full, I don't feel like changing. But I appreciate y'all watching, and I'm sure I'll get better at presentation of these videos as the time goes on, but I'm new to the everything. So, yeah, if you feel anything that, you know, might help, feel free, privately message me. I'm not gonna take it as a, a complaint just i don't know something to learn on so appreciate it we'll get this thing squared away and pretty sure next time be the tangy i gotta get it going so thanks y'all